What's up guys, we're going to be installing Black Arch Slim in VirtualBox. Now the main difference with Black Arch Slim is it just has a lot less packages, so it's easier to keep updated and we can always download the extra packages if we need them. So if we check here under the ISOs section, we have the option to download the 64-bit Slim ISO. So I've already grabbed that, but your first task will be to download this 4.4 gigabyte ISO. Now the next thing will be to fire up VirtualBox and choose the new option, and you'll get this window pop up. And we're going to give our new distro a name. So it's going to be Black Arch Slim. We'll select a machine folder. That's where our virtual hard drives are going to go. The type is going to be Linux, and it seems to have automatically selected Arch Linux for us. Go to next. Now is the RAM allocation. And you can start anywhere from about a gig up to about eight gigabytes for this, depending on how much memory you want to allocate. So let's choose eight gig for this specific virtual machine, which is probably on the high side, realistically. Go to next. We want to create a virtual hard disk. We'll choose the first option, which is going to create a VDI file. And we have two options here. We can either have dynamically allocated or we can have fixed size. Now either's fine, but it's recommended to make sure that you set the default size to something that's larger than about 20 gigabytes. Because if you just choose dynamically allocated and then leave this as a default eight gigabytes, yes, technically the virtual hard disk will resize to become larger, but you're going to get some errors when trying to install Black Arch onto the virtual hard disk because it's going to say we need at least 16 gigabytes in order to get that done. Now I'm just going to select a fixed size and I'm gonna allocate about 40 gig for this. And let's go to create. And we'll just give it a minute to actually create that fixed size hard disk. So now that's created, let's first of all go into settings, then storage. And we want to choose this option to add an optical drive. Now, as we can see, I already have my Black Arch Linux Slim ISO as an option there. Yours might not appear by default, in which case you can choose the option to add. Then you can browse for your newly downloaded Black Arch Slim ISO. So we'll highlight the option there and select choose. We'll go to OK. And now it's time to fire up our new system. Now we get this dialog box to select a startup disk and it's asking us to select a virtual optical disk file. This appears to be what we've already done, but it's asking for confirmation. It's realized that there's no system actually installed on this hard drive at this stage. There's nothing to boot from, so it's asking us this first. We can see that our Black Arts Linux Slim is selected there. If it's not in your case, then make sure you navigate to the correct ISO first. We're going to choose Start and our VM should begin to boot. So we'll choose the first option there, Black Arts Linux Slim. Now I like to make this full screen, so you can do so with the right control key and the F key. Let's choose switch, and we get a nice full screen version of our live Black Arch instance. Now, next step is to log in, and we're going to need the credentials for this live user account, and as is by default in Black Arch, the password is Black Arch, all lowercase. Let's log in. And we'll see that after this loads up, we will have the option on the desktop to install Black Arch Linux so that it persists to the virtual hard drive and we don't need to keep using that ISO to boot from every time. You'll also notice that Black Arch Slim ships with the XFCE environment by default I would probably say that it's more user friendly than the Fluxbox window manager that ships with the full version of Black Arts Linux. Either way, it's Linux, so we can configure everything however we want. We can completely change the desktop environment if we want to. Now we're going to choose the option to install Black Arch, and we're going to follow the installation through. Password here is the same, Black Arch. So now it's just a case of following the installer through. So first of all, we'll select our language, location, keyboard layout, partitions. 
Now, in this case, we just have a single partition. And that is the virtual hard disk that's been created. If we really wanted to, we could partition our hard drive manually, but the easiest option is just to choose erase disk. Swap space is generally good practice, but we can always configure that later and we have a decent amount of RAM. The swap space is probably going to be more helpful if we assigned a low amount of RAM to our VM. We're going to ignore that for now and just choose no swap. And we can see very straightforward partitioning. We have a block of 43 gig and it's now going to be a 43 gig block for Black Arch Linux. Let's go to next. So we'll just type some credentials. We can give our computer a name. This is likely how it's going to show up on the network. So I'm just going to name this Black Arch Slim. Choose a password. So this probably wants to be different from Black Arch. So whichever password you like to use. Login automatically, that's optional. I'm going to say no because I might want to switch the desktop environments around a bit later on. Use the same password for the administrator account. That's completely fine. You might decide to set a different password for security reasons. It's just giving us an overview of what's about to take place. There's nothing particularly new about this screen. It's only what we've instructed the installer to do. It's just confirming all of the details. We'll go to install and there we go. The installation is now in progress. We'll just leave this to run for a while and we'll come back. All right, so installer complete. We're just going to select done and we can see the restart now box is checked. So let's see what happens. Okay, we're at our splash screen. Now, unfortunately, it's asking us to log in as the live user, which is not what we want in this case. So my guess is that it's booted up from the live CD. So we just need to make sure that that medium is not still connected to the VM. So let's just shut this down. I'm just going to go into settings. And if we go to storage, we'll see that our disks are connected there. We just want to remove those because it should be able to boot on its own. So let's fire that up. And instead of looking for the installation medium, it should hopefully just boot from that virtual drive. This looks good. And when we see the splash screen this time, we should have our Zen shell user login as opposed to the live user login. There we go. Let's log in with the password that we selected. And there we go. We're now inside our desktop environment, could probably use some configuration. So if we just right click on the desktop, we go to desktop settings, we can set our wallpaper. Let's go to the downloads folder. I grabbed the wallpaper for this. I actually quite like the color of the taskbar and windows already. Actually it's in downloads. All right, not really sure what it's a wallpaper of, but it looks pretty cool. That's pretty much it. Black Arch Slim up and running in a VM. Enjoy Black Arch guys, and thanks very much for watching.